Tonight, David Hammer is bringing us a unique investigation in conjunction with a reporter in Moscow. It shines a light on powerful Russians who started an energy company right here in New Orleans. This report involves a lot of foreign names, and David will walk us through the connections which reach the White House, the Kremlin, Beijing, and even that young woman recently accused of spying on America. This is John Hotelling, CEO of a natural gas exporting firm called American Ethane Company. American Ethane is a Texas-based company engaged in the development of ethane infrastructure and introducing the next fuel to the global power generation market. Hotelling is from New Orleans and lives in what many consider the largest, grandest mansion on New Orleans' historic St. Charles Avenue. May I invite Mr. John Hotelling, the second CEO of American Ethane Company, and Mr. Chen Jinze, chairman of Nanshan Group, to the signing table. This is Hotelling signing the largest ethane gas export deal in U.S. history at a summit in China last fall, with President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping looking on. And this is hotelling last week in China with a U.S. Commerce Department official and the mayor of a Chinese port city. Hotelling believes his $72 billion in signed contracts will help America reduce its trade deficit with China. So why should we care about all this? Because only a small portion of American ethane is owned by New Orleanian John Hotelling. In fact, American ethane has been mostly owned by Russians. Russians who are making international news now because of their ties to an alleged spy and to Vladimir Putin. The connections are complex. Here's Hotelling. He's partners with Konstantin Nikolaev, a Russian billionaire. U.S. Senate documents show he owns 30 percent of American ethane. Nikolaev's spokesman confirmed last week that he was the primary funder of this woman, Maria Butina, from 2012 to 2014. She was arrested last month and charged with spying on America. Butina was trying to build a gun rights movement, a kind of NRA for Russia. Here she is at the actual NRA conference in 2014, posing with Louisiana's governor at the time, Bobby Jindal. Jindal says he didn't know Butina and just took this photo with her and never saw her again. But at the same time, Butina's sponsor, Nikolaev, was spending a lot of time in Louisiana. Court records show he and Hotelling were trying to build an energy plant at Shady Grove here in St. James Parish. They met with Jindal and asked about Louisiana tax credits. They also met with Louisiana's two U.S. senators in 2014, David Vitter and Mary Landrew. Vitter came to a meeting at Hotelling's mansion. So did two of the richest men in the world, Roman Abramovich and Alexander Abramov. They agreed to give American Ethane $25 million to get started exporting ethane from Louisiana. In exchange, their Russian company owned half of American Ethane. Nikolaev put in $5 million. Two other Russian businessmen contributed millions, too. And so did Putin's former chief of staff, Alexander Voloshin, who gave over a million. At that time, American Ethane was paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for lobbying efforts in Congress, and these forms do not disclose the company's foreign owners. That's important because it's required by the Lobbying Disclosure Act. That law was passed to make sure America's representatives in Congress always know who's seeking their help, and if they could be working on behalf of foreign interests and maybe even against U.S. interests. Hotelling said he always made very clear to the U.S. government and his lobbyists who his Russian partners were. But his lobbyists never disclosed it to Congress until two weeks ago. That's after we reported about the Russian owners. The new lobbying disclosure says that Nikolaev and two other Russians, Andrei Kunatbaev and Mikhail Yuryev, own 88 percent of American ethane. Current lobbyist Kyle Ruckert filed that new disclosure form. We asked him why last week, and he said, quote, American ethane has a complex multi-level ownership where it's not clear how ownership interests flow. I consulted lobbying counsel throughout the process and updated my Lobbying Disclosure Act registration in an abundance of caution. We also asked American Ethane's first lobbyist, Dan Murphy, why he didn't disclose it in 2014 when a Russian company owned half of American Ethane. He simply said his firm, quote, met all registration requirements under the law and our public filing speaks for itself. That will now be for the secretary of the Senate and the clerk of the House to decide. Meanwhile, all that lobbying and money has produced nothing here in Louisiana. American Ethane let its Louisiana business license lapse. 
They set up their headquarters in Houston, and this property stretching all the way back behind me is Shady Grove. That ethane export terminal, it's now planned for Mont Bellevue, Texas. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. For this report, David teamed up with the Russian investigative reporter, Lily Dobrovilskaya from Transparency International in Moscow. You can read their in-depth story online at WWLTV.com.